Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. Your brain needs support. And new Ollie Brainy Chews are a delightful way to take care of your cognitive health. Made with scientifically backed ingredients like Thai ginger, L-theanine, and caffeine. Brainy Chews support healthy brain function and help you find your focus, stay chill, or get energized. Be kind to your mind and get these nootropic chews at ollie.com. That's O-L-L-Y dot com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. And I've got a very special topic for you guys today, audio branding. And with that, I have guest Jody Krangle, and she is the host of the Audio Branding Podcast. She's going to talk to us all about branding yourself with audio, podcasting, how it intersects with video. And it's really an interesting um, conversation around technology and digital media trends. So Jody, welcome. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. I really know this is, like you said, it was a long time coming. We connected on Podmatch. And so kind of briefly, just tell the audience your, your, you know, what you do, how you got there. And I'm excited to dive into the conversation. Sure. Well, I am Jody Krangle. I have been a voice actor full time for about 16, almost 17 years now, mostly in the branding, marketing, advertising end of things. So I stay in the lane where I make other people money. <laughs> and uh, I love it. I love everything about it. But I was starting to recognize uh, back in, well, my, my podcast started in November of 2019. Oh. So I was noticing this before then, but I decided to do a podcast on it because I was noticing that as a voice actor, the sound was being considered as the very last thing added to a project. And I was confused by that, actually. <laughs> so I wanted to find out why that was the case, whether it should be the case. And I started a podcast to ask people who are in the audio space, the audio advertising space, specifically audio advertising, marketing and branding, why that would be happening and what would the alternative be? How could it be better? Because sound influences our buying decisions, definitely, but it also influences our daily lives. It influences everything around us. And I think a lot of that is because we take it for granted. And the reason that it is often the last consideration in a project is because we've taken it for granted and we're not paying as much attention to it as we should. Yeah, and which uh, kind of um, brings me to my next question is um, uh, audio branding, because, you know, I kind of, I'm always looking for the undiscovered territory for attention and just like, mm -hmm. the, what is the next, where's the, where's the trend going, where's the cutting edge? And so when uh, I heard about podcasting in South by Southwest in 2018, I was like, yeah, well, we have, you have to jump on this, you know, you have to build a presence there. But what is audio branding? Why is it important? Uh, why are people now going to audio as opposed to video or you know, I think books are still there, but it's kind of lost its lion's share. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. Uh, I will, I'll give you the definition that the International Sound Awards define audio branding as. They say that it's a brand sound that represents the identity and values of a brand in a distinctive manner. The audio logo, branded functional sounds, so say your GE kettle makes a sound when it's finished boiling, or your washing machine makes a sound when it's finished its cycle, you know, that kind of thing. And brand music also are uh, part of the brand voice and characteristic elements of audio branding. So it's a big umbrella. There's a lot of touch points that every company has. A lot of them are audio only. So you'd be really surprised. Like for instance, think about your on hold. I don't care how big a company you are, your your message on your um, your phone 
if someone isn't actually reaching you direct, should be a good message that reflects your brand values and who you are as a company. So a lot of people have, I've drawn this analogy before, but if you're a high-end jewelry store, you don't want 80s hairband music on your on hold. That's no. just not a good look. <laughs> not a good sound either. <laughs> I mean, I love 80s hair bands, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but but for a jewelry store, unless you're really cutting edge, maybe not such a great tie-in, you know? Yeah. So it's about illustrating and and showing people in audio form who you are in a really quick and to the point method. And sound reaches our hearts really really quickly so so again think of watching a movie without the sound on <laughs> you're gonna get what's going on you'll understand what's happening on the screen you're just not gonna care i can watch horror movies no problem with no sound yeah. like it does nothing for me yeah. it's just a bunch of gore on the screen <laughs> yeah, yeah. doesn't make me feel anything <laughs> really i mean <laughs> like movie magic right but movie magic part of that movie magic is the sound it's the sound design, it's the, the footsteps, it's the music that happens when there's something about to happen that you know is going to be bad. <laughs> you know, there's uh, commercials are the same way. So in a commercial, I, I can cry. People can make me cry in commercials if they're a good commercial because the music, the sound effects, the dialogue, all of that works with the picture to let you know what you should be feeling in that moment. Wow. And good advertising makes you feel something because you remember that feeling. You may completely for like you may completely forget who the advertising person was, what the company was. Like you don't want to do that. But you're you're going to remember things more deeply when you have an accompanying uh, accompanying sound to make it hit you deeper that's yeah. more memorable for us and advertising is failed advertising if you don't remember it yeah so is marketing and branding for that matter you know you want to remember it and you're more likely to remember how it made you feel than the look of the logo look bumble knows you're exhausted by dating all the must not take yourself too seriously and 6-1 since that matters. And what do I even say other than, hey? <sighs> well, that's why they're introducing an all-new Bumble. With exciting features to make compatibility easier, starting the chat better, and dating safer. They've changed, so you don't have to. Download the new Bumble now. At Evernorth Health Services, we believe costs shouldn't get in the way of life-changing care. And we're doing everything in our power to make it possible. Behavioral health solutions that also keep your projections at their best? It's possible. Pharmacy benefits that benefit your bottom line? It's possible. Complex specialty care that cares about your ROI? It's possible. Because we're already doing it. All while saving businesses billions. That's wonder made possible. Learn more at evernorth.com slash wonder. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, yeah it's this kind of... Uh... You know, how do people process information? Is it visual, auditory? Is it sensations? And um, you know what what brings to mind is you know when you watch these like Pixar or um, these animation, you know you can you hear the uh, the voice and the characters, and you know which actors saying that because they have such distinctive you know they've portrayed that brand through that voice you know over yeah the age, so um, sure <laughs> yeah which is really interesting. It's like also like because I'm. I'm in Europe for the summer and it's like you you still hear the western influence cuz the music and you mm -hmm. and that music is catchy so it's like you know when you hear it, it's like oh you know that that so that's how powerful audio is. Oh um, totally. There's a lot of places where we're only hearing as well. Yeah. You know like like any um uh home system like you know Google Home and and all of the other things that are available now in home. Yeah. you're not seeing anything all you're doing is hearing so if you want to place an order for a product yeah well you know how is that product gonna be different from another product that does the same thing yeah you want yeah. to differentiate yeah i love that and uh you know kind of uh moving along the conversation is so you know question is um you know for the audience you know whether we have doctors lawyers they want to build distinctive brands 
you recommend podcasts, you recommend YouTube, um, short form video. I know you are a voice actor. Um, I'm mm-hmm. not sure people want to do that, but how can they use their voice and branding in these different uh, social media platforms and venues? Well, I will say that right now when I'm doing my podcast, I'm both videoing it and audio taping it like I'm taping (laughs) showing my age there (laughs) Uh, recording (laughs) audio recording and video recording so what that allows me to do is to either release the whole video to YouTube if I want to release bits and pieces of it to YouTube as shorts and to social media as shorts and also to have an audio only podcast that sounds just a little bit different from the video that's on YouTube they are completely separate places let me just say, uh, the RSS feed is the podcast, and that goes out to all of the podcast delivery systems all over. But YouTube is its own little world. <laughs> <laughs> it's also the most popular search engine when you think about it. So yeah. for discoverability, it's fantastic for a podcast. So visuals are very important when it comes to to YouTube, and I wouldn't stint on that i you know definitely good interesting eye-catching thumbnails are very very important as our titles Uh, but good sound if you don't have good sound people are not going to keep listening (laughs) i could tell you that right now it's going to hurt their ears good enough sound is like it's okay it's not going to differentiate you all that much but it's not going to hurt people's ears and they may continue listening But if you're going to spend thousands of dollars on a video, and I'm not even talking about a podcast now, I'm just talking about a video for your company, an anthem of some kind that tells people who you are and why you're proud of what you do. And I do a lot of voiceover for that kind of stuff all day, every day. Love it. (laughs) But if you do not have good sound to go with those stunning pictures, (laughs) it makes your company look cheap. It really does. It ruins all the money you spent on that video. It just, it it cheapens everything. It just, it ruins the whole presentation. Mm -hmm. So you really do need to think of both, if not exactly at the same time, pretty close. Yeah. Because you don't want to have a lovely video and then go, oh, we need music for this. Okay, maybe we should just go look in a license free music directory and pick something, you know? Yeah. Uh, It's not made for your video. It's not something you own. So your nearest competitor can use the same song. Just be aware. Uh, And, you know, voice actors as well, you know, um, normally there's a a kind of non-compete that we sort of abide by whether or not it's in the contract. So if someone is using your voice as a brand for their for their company, for their brand, then you normally would not have that voice actor working for another uh, similar company. It just wouldn't, it normally for human beings wouldn't happen. <laughs> when you're talking in AI voice, which you know is becoming more and more prevalent, then the if the voice actor has no control over where their voice is being used because it's an AI, several different companies of the same genre, of the same type, could be using the same voice. And how are you differentiating yourself then? Plus, how are you actually getting a human connection? Like, there's that human connection. Mm -hmm. And audio specifically is meant to make you feel. So if you're cheaping out on that, again, you're kind of ruining the whole effect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really love that. And it, I think, um, you know, combining video with audio and um, that can, you know, supercharge, you know, but, and they have to be both, you know, very good quality. Um, one thing is uh, I recently was talking, some people love uh, podcasting because they can, uh, I, w- I don't want to say hide, but they don't have to mm-hmm. appear in front of the camera if they don't want to. And that's kind of good sure. for introverts and um so as an introverted entrepreneur you know um what strategies have you employed to um you know stay true to your personality i know you you're on video but was that always the case or how did you get over this stage fright oh it took a (laughs) while i am definitely an introvert and 
I found it very hard at first. There's a reason why I do voiceover. <laughs> I never wanted to be in front of the camera. But yeah. you know, it's becoming, I think the big thing of going on camera is to know that you're not going to be perfect. <laughs> and that you shouldn't try to be perfect. Because yeah. if you are, it's less authentic. Yeah. So I just try to be authentically me. I giggle when I'm gonna giggle. I, you know, strip over words. I say, you know, a lot. <laughs> there are just things that become my mannerisms that people get used to on video as much as they do on audio. So I just put it out there and went, mm, okay, this is me. You either like me or you don't. <laughs> and that's, that's kind of what you need to do in all marketing, actually, because marketing is as much about who you repel as who you attract. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there are some people who aren't going to get me and there are some people who aren't going to get you and anyone else watching this, you know, yeah. and that's fine. Those are not your people. <laughs> Those are not the people who are going to get what your company is trying to put out there and they're never going to be your clients. So that's it. You've automatically made the, you know, the transition between who's going to know what you're after and, and what you what you uh, stand for and who doesn't, who who doesn't like what you stand for and whatever. Um, yeah. Uh, um, it's, it reminds me of this because um, there's this one um, YouTube podcaster and um, and he's broken every single rule in the book. He has like no thumbnails. He's like. Mm -hmm. I'll just turn on the camera and mic and just start talking wherever and he's got like thirty thousand followers you know he's he's in um and it's just like kind of like a testament it's just like you know um zoom and all these live streams are kind of like allow you um to uh it's like kind of a dress rehearsal it's like and you can do it in like a lot of increments and repetitions so you get comfortable and mm -hmm. um, and uh like i said it's really nice to know that you don't have to be perfect you just get on camera and just start talking somebody's going to see it you know these algorithms are really good at pairing uh the content with the um with the uh, consumer so the other question i have is um what you also consider audio a hidden gem and that's quite interesting because um are you are we to this point where um uh we're at mainstream adoption or people are still just relying on video um, i know youtube is like kind of the biggest and kind of like the and um, so talk about how it's a hidden gem. Well, audio branding is the hidden gem I was talking about. <laughs> so audio itself, like I was saying before, I think we take it for granted a lot of the time. So when it's good, we don't pay as much attention to it. We just know it's there and we feel something when we're watching a video and there's good sound. If there's bad sound, <laughs> wow, do we notice. So, so it's really only noticed when it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so so be careful is is the lesson there, right? Just make sure that you're doing audio well enough that you're not tripping people's, ooh, this is bad, <laughs> alarms, right? <laughs> but when it comes to audio branding, a consistent sound for a company lets people know who you are in a really short amount of time. Uh -huh. And again, it's that whole repel who doesn't get you and attract who does. So... Uh -huh. So, you know, that will give your company a very distinctive feel, a very, uh, it, it'll stand out, it'll make you stand out in a sea of sameness, because, yeah. <laughs> because there's a lot of stuff out there, there's a lot of noise, a lot of noise. And I think having a distinctive audio brand also means that when you're only being heard, people know who you are. Yeah. And there's a lot of companies out there who, if all you're doing is hearing them, you have no idea who they are. You mm -hmm. don't know what they sell. You don't know what they do. You don't know what their mm -hmm. brand values are, you know, and, and people need to care before they will pay attention. And mm -hmm. you're not going to make them care if you don't have a sound that's your own. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, there's one kind of question, because I know you, you're, you have a passion for kind of, um, culture like D D and comic books and, <laughs> i am um, a classic nerd yes <laughs> actually uh, i think today's it's actually really cool to be into these you know these kind of new uh cultures um how do you um use these to connect with the audience on a personal level and share your hobbies and influence your uh, professional life well again revealing those things about you that people may not <laughs> know upon first coming to your website etc you know 
it just makes you more human, right? <laughs> I I really like D and D because it gives me that outlet to do improv without being in an improv class. So yeah. I can play a different character and have fun and do a different voice and whatever and just, you know, have fun in the moment. And it allows me the 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 spark to play. And I think that most voice actors, no matter what they're doing, you could be doing phone messages, you could be doing like an anthem video for anyone, you know, uh, advertising often asks us to play. <laughs> so, you know, just having that playful spirit, I think, makes you more attractive to anyone who might come and want to experience your brand. Yeah. I, I just think it makes us more human and we are attracted to interesting humans. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it just reminds me of traveling and just kind of you kind of you let things go and just um, be curious. And, mm -hmm. and um, how can people, you know, check out your podcast? You've got a wonderful voice and sound and, and check out your work and uh, follow you on your socials. Sure. Well, I am at Jody Krangle on most socials. You can find me there. The YouTube channel is Jody Krangle VO. So that should be easy to find. For the podcast, that is at audiobrandingpodcast.com. And my website is at voiceoversandvocals.com. So <laughs> there's a lot there. And, and I have uh, a lot of what I tend to do with the podcast is I put my blogs on my website, and then I put the player at the top of the blog. So uh, if you go to the blog on my website, you'll see it split up in different categories. So I have you know, a podcast category, an audio branding category, a technology category, um, a voiceover public speaking category, you know, all of these different a healthcare uh, category, because we talk about sound and healthcare as well. So all sorts of different places that people can find stuff to interest them. Yeah, oh, man, I really enjoyed this conversation. Great personality, great content. And um, for all the audience, be sure to um, give Jody's socials a like and follow. Check out her podcast, leave a five star review. And with that, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it.